Hey guys, this is Rich with Wolverine Airsoft, and today we're going to take a look at how to do the installation on the brand new Bolt from Wolverine Airsoft. So let's jump right into it on today's What the Tech. Okay, so we got our Bolt here, and uh, this is a demo of kind of what the production packaging will look like. Uh, this is the Bolt with cylinder, and as you can see, Bolt plus cylinder. So it's in the long packaging. The bolt without cylinder will come in a shorter packaging. I'm just going to go ahead and unbox this and kind of show you a couple things. Uh, first thing to point out is there's this little insert. It will be packaged a little differently on the other packaging. Uh, on this insert, this is important, important. There's a, a QR code here, uh, and there will also be a URL to register your product for warranty be eligible for warranty, you need to go and sign up your product uh, at this address. Okay, don't miss that. Uh, this is something new we're starting with the Bolt, and uh, we'll be doing this moving forward with other products as well. So uh, as soon as you open it, it's right there. Hop on the website. Uh, you can scan the QR code with your smartphone and uh, go right there to register it. It just takes a minute. Inside the packaging, we have a bunch of packages, have a couple screws to hold on our trigger switch, have our battery, we have our bolt with cylinder, and then we have our wire harness and our airline fitting. That's what's in the packaging. If you ordered the bolt without cylinder, it's going to look like this. Just won't include the, the cylinder we offer. So uh, for the demonstration of the installation today, we're going to be installing on a JG Bar 10, the G-Spec model, but they're all pretty much the same. So we're gonna do that installation first, uh, and we're gonna do that without the cylinder. And then after we do the installation, after we go through the installation, uh, we're going to talk about some of the different brands, um, instead of some of the idiosyncrasies between the different brands, the, the differences, things you, uh, you might need to account for depending on what brand you're installing in. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the gun up here. So we got our gun up here. Disassembly is just like you normally would with these. We're going to go through this quickly, not show all the details. There's plenty of uh, detailed instructions on how to do this. Uh, it's just a very common gun. All right, so we got this disassembled. Um, there are two basic things that we need to do. We need to install the trigger, and we need to uh, install the system inside the cylinder. We're gonna do the trigger first. What I'm gonna do is just disassemble the trigger box, and we are going to remove all the sears out of this system, which is happy days, because they're what always likes to break wear out. So we're going to completely remove all of the sears from this system. So there's four small screws and then you'll need to unscrew the screw that holds on the safety lever. All of your sears, spring, assembly, all we're going to have left is our trigger, uh, the sp trigger spring here, and then our two adjustment uh, screws there. All the sears can get disposed of, as can the bolt stop. The next step is going to be to attach the trigger switch to the trigger box. I'm just going to go ahead and pull all the screws out and such so they don't get lost while we work on the trigger box. Now if I reassemble this, I'll take a look at where the trigger is going to sit. This is our uh, wiring. This is your trigger switch. And that little orange uh, button gets hit, the battery is connected to the solenoid, and the solenoid, it's going to sit right there. And you can see the tab on the side of the trigger, the safety tab, now will engage the trigger switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the 116th 
the drill bit that is included with the kit. And I'm just going to mark a spot and kind of find where the trigger wants to go. I'm going to hold it in place once it's about where I want. And I'm just going to kind of spin the drill bit in the top hole, pressing down until I get a little mark. This position is not uh, super critical. Because keep in mind, once we put that screw in, we can rotate the position of the switch to get the right amount of engagement. But just need it in basically the right location. You, uh, get it as close as you can to where you want it, and then you can adjust it with the rotation afterwards. So now we have our two little screws, and I'm going to take this drill bit now and I'm going to drill the hole. All right, before I drill the hole, uh, if you have a center punch, this is a nice use for a center punch. It's not absolutely necessary but it helps keep the hole where you want it. It helps the drill bit not walk. So just punch that. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this off just to keep shavings out of the trigger mechanism. I'm gonna drill the hole. We're gonna try to keep the shavings as much as we can out of the other parts. So as you drill, preferably this would be done in a separate location from your parts. I should have mentioned that earlier. I'm doing it on camera so you can see the process. There's our hole, and we can uh, clean up those shavings here. It's a good time to mention that the system does have a built-in fil filter element inside the air fitting, but as with any pneumatic system, keep it clean, keep dirt, debris, metal shavings, all that kind of stuff out of your system, and it'll be a lot happier. So let's go ahead and grab our trigger box, our screw. This is a T6 driver star bit. The screw is self-tapping so there's no need to uh, tap the hole or anything. Just thread the screw in. I'm not going to put it in real tight just yet because I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it with the other half. When I reassemble it, I'm going to take the short lead and I'm going to put it up through the opening where the spring guide stop was previously. I'm going to go ahead and put it together like that. Make sure nothing's pinched. And I'm just going to check you can see my trigger isn't quite engaging the switch. So I'm just going to rotate the switch a little bit until I'm, getting, until I'm getting engagement. Then I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down a little more, and we should be good. We do include a second screw. If you want to put the second screw in, you can. We never bother with it because we found that it just, uh, there's nothing putting any pressure on the switch body itself to move. So as long as you snug the one screw down, there's just really not a need for the second screw. But we do include it in case you uh, would like to do that. Now all I'm going to do is go ahead and put the, the remainder of the screws back into the trigger box and the safety lever on. And at this point I can check, uh, once it, it, the safety lever is back on, I can check that the safety is actually stopping the trigger before it hits the trigger switch. So if I have it on, you can see I'm not engaging the switch. Safety off. I'm able to hit the switch. I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall the rest of the screws. So with all the screws reinstalled, we are pretty much done the hardest part of the installation, which was just the wiring. As you can tell, it was not that difficult. Uh, one thing I did want to mention was, depending on how you have the switch positioned exactly, this screw here, you may want to loosen this up, rotate the switch out of the way, and install the screw, and then reset the position on that. So let's go ahead and set that aside, and let's get, jump into the cylinder. The cylinder, we're just going to disassemble as per usual. Again, there are instructions online if you need help with that. We use a small Allen wrench. All the internals of the cylinder can be set aside. We won't be using them. Now we'll take the bolt and we're going to slide it inside the cylinder. The airline hole needs to line up with the slot and we like to bend over the, uh, the short lead wire lead there so that it slides in easily, just like so. We can go ahead and install the cylinder head. And again, use the Allen wrench to snug it down. Don't over tighten the net. The threads on most of these cylinders are not terribly strong. Don't over tighten it, just snug it down enough that it's not gonna, not gonna move around. So there it is, installed inside the cylinder. So we have our cylinder done, we have our wiring done. Really all that's left is routing the airline. So routing the airline, we got our receiver back out here. Really we just basically need to drill uh, one main hole. And that is a hole in the receiver here. Now, the way this works is the airline fitting will go through the receiver and thread into the bolt itself like so. 
with that being held in place by the receiver. When you cycle the bolt, all that you're doing is sliding the cylinder around the stationary unit itself. So what we need to do is we need to drill a hole in the receiver to allow the airline fitting to go through. Now on standard JG and Tokyo Marui BSR-10 systems, there's a really easy marker and that's this molding mark here. We're just going to drill our hole right in the middle of that. We'll post a link in the description here for if you're doing other rifles where this molding mark is not there, uh, how to measure uh, where exactly you should put uh, the airline fitting. So let's go ahead and, and uh, drill that hole. We're going to need a quarter inch drill bit. Again, I'm going to go ahead and center punch just to keep us on target, and then we can go ahead and drill. Again, uh, we're doing this all on video, but if you're doing this, please do it in a location away from your system so that none of the shavings get, get into the bolt itself. So, we got our hole drilled. Uh, again, I was using a quarter inch drill bit. But keep in mind, this is a quarter, the, the shaft on this fitting is a quarter inch. So, uh, if you use a quarter inch drill bit, you may find that it's a little tight. Uh, still, we could force it through, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, over drill it a little bit, just kind of work the drill around a little bit to open the hole up. And there we see it fits in there nicely now. All right, with the hole for our airline drilled, we're really ready to just go ahead and put everything together. We're going to take the cylinder, again, check that the hole for the airline fitting is lined up with the slot. Uh, make sure that the wiring, the little uh, wire lead, is inside the, the cylinder. We don't want it getting caught when we install it. I line up my threaded hole for the airline fitting with the hole I just drilled, put my airline fitting through, thread it into place. Wiggling the cylinder around a little bit helps sometimes to make sure that you aren't catching the edge of the cylinder on the lip of the airline fitting. Alrighty, now we just have to do pull the electronics through. I'm just going to use a small screwdriver or an o-ring pick or something like that to pop the, the leads through. Now I'm going to take my trigger box I'm going to plug it in, and this fitting is going to sit right where your sears used to go. So you can see it'll sit right up in that area, and then the trigger box will just attach as per usual. And with that, we really are pretty much installed. I want to mention a couple more things. When you install the airline, uh, this will use a quarter inch wrench. The airline will thread into the, that fitting. We do put some thread locker on the threads of this fitting before we ship it. However, if you assemble and disassemble this multiple times, that will wear off. A little bit of blue Loctite, something light, uh, we do recommend on the threads of this piece because it is the stop when you're cycling the bolt. So too much wiggling without it being uh, held in place can cause it to work loose. Just install the airline, take a quarter inch wrench uh, or an adjustable wrench, just tighten that down. Okay, so got this all set up, went ahead and put our trigger uh, guard back on and we can I plugged in a battery to our wire harness I'm just going to check that it functions when you pull the trigger everything's doing what we could could also air test it at this point only thing left to do is to figure out where we want the airline to exit the stock I'm going to talk about a couple options there probably difficult to see on the camera but there is an opening at the back of the stock from the trigger area back to the stock. That's where both our airline and our wire harness are going to run, back through there into the stock. We include a, a long length of airline with the unit. So if you want, you can run the airline back and exit at the back of the stock, say behind the, the sling mount. Uh, if you prefer, you can make it exit at the base of the grip. Just drill a hole there, or if you would like, the easiest as far as routing is to just drill a hole right about here and have the airline just exit straight down and come out the front. It's really up to you. You know, different people are going to have different preferences as far as how they route the airline, but those are some of the more common options as far as that goes. Alternatively, if you are running, this is the this is the uh, bar ten. Same with the VSR. If you're running the CO2 adapter and storm regulator inside the stock. You don't have to drill a hole at all, you just run your airline back to the back. We're gonna pop the cap off the stock here and that whole assembly just fits up inside there. Those are some different options. On this one, uh, we plan to run the CO2 in stock. 
So we're not gonna drill a hole on this one, but I am gonna go ahead and run the air line and the wiring through so you can see how it all goes back together. First, I'm gonna feed the air line through the opening that goes to the stock. You can see it got it coming out the back. That one's good. Disconnect the battery, flip this around. And this is gonna go right through the same opening. Get fed back. Both of those can go through, no problem. The only thing that is a little bit tricky about putting this back together, see if I can show you on camera here, is where these two go through, there's a tab on the back end of the trigger guard that fits into that opening. Both of those lines, both the wiring and the air line, they need to sit above that tab. So I'm just gonna work them up and over. Once you get that situated, you can slide the tab into place as per usual. Generally, just lightly, lightly pull on the air line and the wire harness. Do not just yank on it, just to make sure that it's not, uh, not bound up anywhere. And then the whole thing goes back together. Put our screws back in. Uh, one thing I will mention on the bar 10, this front screw if you tighten it down too much, it'll make the mag release catch stick. So if I tighten it down more, you'll see if I push it down, it sticks. So just loosen it up just enough that it pops back out. The other thing you'll note, you may notice is that on some of these, tightening or loosening the two screws will uh, affect how freely the action slides. You can see now it slides very nicely, no resistance. That's just because there's some play in between the receiver and the barrel and the hop-up unit. How tight you tighten down the different screws affects how exactly they line up. So if you're noticing there's a lot of drag on the bolt when you're trying to cycle it, check that. Other than that, we are completely done. You can see at the back, I can plug in my battery, no problem. Then check that everything's working which it is. And again, at this point, you could just run your airline out, uh, say, through a hole here, or in the grip up here, if you like, and you can trim your airline to whatever length you need, and just use the push to connect fitting to attach to it. Battery gets stowed in there. We will be installing the Wraith and CO2 adapter and regulator, and they will fit inside the stock as well. All right, guys, so that's it for the basic installation. Again, this is a JG Bar 10 for the Wolverine Airsoft Bolt. So let's jump right into it on today's What the Tech.